Greetings and welcome to AARP Indiana's second Caregiver Weeklies event of 2023. Caregiver Weeklies is a virtual event series that provides access to caregiving experts and resources from across the state of Indiana on a weekly basis throughout the month of November, which is National Family Caregiving Month. We hope the information and insights shared will help in your personal caregiving journeys. I'm Nancy McCammon Hansen, a member of AARP Indiana's Fort Wayne volunteer team and AARP's The Roost News on YouTube. I'm joined today by Emily Gorman, who is Director of Community Engagement with AARP Indiana, and she will be facilitating today's event with our guest. We have a few housekeeping items to note before we kick off the program. Please use the chat to enter any topic you hope to learn more about during today's program. Moreover, please submit questions via the chat through the program. We'll do our best to address as many topics and questions as time permits. I also want to remind everyone that the Caregiver Weekly's virtual events occur every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central throughout November. This month, you will hear about AARP's Prepare to Care Guide and Home Fit Guide, as well as from the State of Indiana's Division on Aging about changes coming to long-term care in the Hoosier State. You can register for these upcoming events at www.aarp.org forward slash IN. That's www.aarp.org forward slash IN. As well as find recordings of previous events, such as our inaugural event with an estate planning and elder law attorney. Today's episode will focus on our state's area agencies on aging and the many services they offer. We are joined by Jen Trowbridge, who is the president and CEO with the Northwest Indiana Community Action Organization, which is based in Crown Point. Jen is the, um, the agency that Jen works for is focused on mitigating poverty and the health-related social needs that arise from nutrition access, housing, and lack of resources. Leading teams that impact 60,000 lives a year, Jen's background prepared her for this important role. She's a native of Northwest Indiana and built her career around the underserved. Jennifer's leadership tenure spans more than 15 years. She has served people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, infants and children, and was hyper-focused on family caregivers for more than six years before joining NWICA. She earned her bachelor's in psychology, her master's in business administration, and a doctoral certificate in strategic leadership. So without further delay, I'd like to uh, welcome Jen, welcome Emily, and uh, ask Emily to uh, kick, us, kick us off with the first question. Will do. Thank you so much, Nancy, and welcome, Jen. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. I don't think that we could ask for a better guest to talk all things caregiving. So thank you for being with us today. Um, we have a couple of questions we wanted to ask you just to give our audience um, some really good information and resources around caregiving um, from your perspective. So I'm going to start at the beginning, and I wondered if you could just tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do with your organization. Sure. So I joined as the CEO for NICA just at two years ago and was really excited to get involved. I knew that NICA was an area agency on aging. I had been uh, with a provider that was statewide for a long time. And so I knew that they did all this work focused on folks um, just aging safely in their home. But I discovered that they do so much more. And so my background really ended up being a good fit because we do serve people um, anywhere from pregnancy all the way to end of life, all um, in the guides of helping provide services to help people thrive at home. So um, I have a four children family, very fulfilling um, personal life. My husband and I have four boys, some are young adults now. So we stay busy in that space. My husband also works for a four purpose organization in the area. So we do a lot of community engagement. Um, and we're big fans of AARP and the information that they put out uh, to try to keep people engaged with services and supports. So really excited that you invited me here today. 
Well, we are very excited to have you. And um, I see that uh, one of our other volunteers, Maddie, was able to join us. We did have some technical difficulties at the beginning. Oh, and she's gone. Never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nancy, if you want to go ahead with the second question. Okay, uh, Jen, what's your service area? And are there area agency on aging? Uh, Triple A's. Yep. Triple A's for different parts of the state. I know there's one here in Fort Wayne. Yes, so. you have a pretty large one in Fort Wayne as well. Yes. Yeah, so Northwest Indiana Community Action focuses on that Northwest piece. So our services are geared towards Lake, Border, Jasper, Newton, Stark, and Pulaski counties. That's where our services for aging are focused in. But there are 14 other agencies around the state that do this work to again, helping people age safely in their homes. And every AAA is a little different in their menu of services. And some do AAA plus other things. So Northwest Indiana Community Action manages the Area Agency on Aging and manages our WIC programs, the women, infant, and children in our area. And we manage the uh, housing uh, supports what we call it's called coordinated entry so for people who are experiencing homelessness they're going to connect with northwest indiana community action and then there's a whole nother uh just segment of our of our work that definitely uh impacts our aging side which is people who are below a certain income threshold and they need supports in order for their day-to-day -day lives to function healthy so i mean things like energy assistance or rental payments so all of that work is what we do at Northwest Indiana Community Action, but all of the counties in the state have an area agency on aging. That's awesome and really important information for anyone who is getting into caregiving or find themselves in need of resources to know. Um, you kind of covered a little bit of this, but I'll ask you anyway, just in case there's more detail that you can go into. I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about some of the main services and resources that is offered by a AAA. Yeah, and so if again, if you live in Indianapolis, your AAA is going to be SACOA. And if you're in Fort Wayne, it's aging and in-home services. And so you can go and Google, um, you can either Google area agency on aging indiana map and if you google that it'll show up your county and which AAA you connect with and so there you can find what are the services that they provide so with nica our waiver services which we'll talk a little bit more about we offer those so people who need help with maybe three activities of daily living um, so dressing or feeding, maybe even walking, people that need help in that space, you can come to NICA and you can get waiver services. You can do that for all of the AAAs that uh, represent the state. So anyone who has those kind of criteria, they can get what we call these waiver services. Other services could be uh, things like um, socialized meals. So we call those congregate meal settings, or they can get home delivered meals uh, NICA specifically, we do things in preventative health. We do things specific for caregivers that are outside of maybe the typical menu of things. Um, so I look forward to maybe exploring that a little bit deeper with you too. Wonderful. Thank you. So looking at different facets of caregiving, what would you recommend caregivers look to the area agencies on aging to assist with? Yeah, uh, if you're a caregiver, I recommend contacting your area agency on aging and even asking that question. I'll share with you what we do, but I will also share that it fluctuates. Um, we sometimes get funding to try something new for caregivers. Uh, we are always adding to the menu of caregiver services. We do that because the state is also really focused on supporting uh, caregivers to reduce caregiver burden, to reduce caregiver stress. So there's opportunities that your local area agency on aging can get to help engage caregivers um, and keep that caregiving relationship last as long and healthy as possible. NICA specifically, we fund services like respite care to give the caregiver a break, structured family caregiving so caregivers can get coaching and support and even sometimes financial support. It is expensive sometimes being a caregiver and you can't always work. 
and dedicate the time to your loved one. And the state recognizes that. And so there are some programs you could qualify for to be that primary caregiver for your loved one. The state just added a new service. It's called caregiver coaching and behavior management. And these are for non-living caregivers uh, to help them manage some of those needs. There's also adult day services that we fund so that people can socialize and be engaged and their primary caregiver can have a break while someone's at an adult day service. So we help just coordinate places where people can um, engage, get education, even preventative health. If we can intervene and delay or avoid someone even needing what I mentioned earlier, waiver services, or someone even considering going to a facility, if we can keep them healthy at the front end, that really is the ultimate goal too. So a lot of the area agencies on aging do what I would call preventative health to try to help people in that space. And I That's do awesome. want to just one thing to add to that because it was really great to see, this is a plug for the state. A few years ago, AARP did a scorecard for all of the states and Indiana was not ranked anywhere near the middle or the top. We were pretty, pretty close to that bottom. And a few years later, the 2023 scorecard came out and it ranks all of the states and Indiana is now 27th. So I'm just really proud of the work Indiana has done. We know that multiple people are engaged in that to make those results uh, improve. But I wanna give that recognition that area agencies on aging, that is their complete dedication. And so we know that some of these new programs have been uh, very helpful in moving that needle. Definitely. I am so glad you brought that up as well. Um, our last episode in this series is going to take a bit of a deeper dive into our long-term care services and our scorecard as well. Um, so I'm really glad that you brought that up because if people would like to find out more, they can tune in for our last episode because um, we're excited to dive into that too. Um, so you've kind of already answered this question, but I am just going to ask anyway, just in case we missed anything. Um, I wanted to know what the best way for those of us who are planning to be or who already are caregivers to find resources from their AAA to help them plan. Um, and you talked about just picking up the phone and calling. Um, I didn't know if there is a website or anything else that might be worth mentioning as well. There's a few places to start. If anyone who watches this video lives in the counties I mentioned, Lake Porter, Jasper Newton, Stark, Glasgow, you can contact us directly at 219-794-1829. If you're in other parts of the state, that number's not gonna help you much. We can't transfer you to your local AAA, but you can go again into, um, into the web and you can look up via Google, um, Indiana, AAA maps, and it will pull up your local area agency on aging. All of us have websites. NICA's is www.nwi-ca.org. Every AAA has one. Um, in addition to that, we also have an association that gets involved too. So if you start uh, spending a little time online looking at Indiana area agencies on aging, it really opens up a whole door to information uh, for you as a caregiver. So when you're looking at services from uh, the area agency on aging, aging in your area, um, is there an income threshold that uh, you have to meet? Are there different types of payments that you accept like Medicaid or private insurance or private pay, anything else that, um, caregivers and, and would-be caregivers need to know? You know what, Nancy? I thought coming into this role that, yep, there's a solid income threshold. This is what you have to make. If you don't, you need a trust. I have now learned differently. So your area agency on aging, since they are focused on helping people age safely in their home, there is a menu of things that people may be eligible for that aren't income focused. So primarily, the system is designed for people under, I would say about 2,400 a month, personally, not household, but, but your person. Um, there are a lot of other things though you could qualify for just based on your physical ability. Um, sometimes people don't have a high income, but they have a lot of assets. They have a lot of property or they have multiple cars or large savings accounts. 
So when you contact your local area agency on aging, you can just share with them that you wanna see what you're eligible for. And they're gonna do a thorough assessment. They're gonna ask questions about income and then they can let you know um, what, you know what would fit. If you are a caregiver and you wanna make a call on someone's behalf, it is in your best interest to do that research before you make the call. Find out what that income is. Find out how many assets you know, they have or what the value is. It's okay if they don't wanna share that. You just might not be able to be clear on all the services your loved one can get until you disclose that information. That's really helpful, thank you. Um, my next question is, if somebody in need um, were to call their AAA, uh, would you be able to help them with providing in-home care? That is our primary focus, is our aim is we want people to stay at home, in home, as safely as they can. We know a couple things, area agencies on aging, we actually know a lot more than a couple things, but we do know that the majority of people wanna age at home and they don't want to age in a facility. We also know that for people on Medicaid, especially uh, for the taxpayers, it's really expensive for facility-based care. There is a need for facility-based care and there is a need for in-home care and really robust in-home care. And that's where the area agency also comes, on, um, comes engaged. And so for us, we fund programs and services and help coordinate the care that someone receives in their home. We take the burden away for them having to make multiple phone calls, for them having to pay another entity. We do all of that. So once you contact your area agency on aging, you share your information and they determine your eligibility, you're generally assigned a case manager and they help make sure that you get services in the home. And behind the scenes, all those financial transactions, they happen behind the scenes and they generally happen through Medicaid um, specifically um, or another means. But our families, we try not to burden them with those transactions. So in other words, what you're saying is that there is financial assistance available for in-home care. Yep. And um, if you call the, your area agency on aging, they'll direct you to the right person to talk to about that. They will. And you also can do some private pay too. And we found that we have people, you know, in my personal and professional world who they maybe didn't qualify financially for a specific program they were looking for, but the family had the funds, they wanted the service, they wanted the expertise. And so you can also private pay for some extra uh, things. For instance, home delivered meals, those are covered, but people also can private pay for that, uh, especially feeling peace of mind that their mom is getting um, you know, an appropriate meal delivered to her home every day that meets her dietary restrictions where she doesn't have to use the oven, you know, something of that nature, those kind of supports are out there for people. Okay. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, so you actually already answered my next question. I was going to ask about case managers. So I'm going to skip over that one and go on to my next one and ask you, um, one of our goals at AERP is also to help aging Hoosiers to stay in their homes for as long as possible and age in place. And so I wondered if your AAA, um, wherever you are in the state, would provide home mod modification or help with essential repair services to make the home a safer and more livable space for older adults. This is a really big one because it is covered under some funding mechanisms. It's complicated because every funding that your area agency on aging gets, it comes with some strict parameters and how to use it. We don't have discretion. We can't choose how to use some of those funds. They're guided by federal rules. They're guided by state rules. And home modifications is one of those. We do have that ability. If people need a home mod, maybe it's bars, maybe it's a ramp, they can ask for that and our agency can pay for that. And this is statewide. Area agencies on aging have funds for that. The challenge is having the qualified people to install and build those ramps. In order for them to do that, they have to make some pretty strict um, qualifications. And that's difficult. And it's difficult to find people that are willing to do it. Uh, so we're looking at a couple solutions. It can be done, it does happen, it happens all the time, but it generally takes six to 12 months. That's a long wait for families. 
Some area agencies on aging have relationships with contractors. Some are deeper than others. You might be able to move that needle a little sooner. Some will say it's just really difficult to do. We're trying to look at other ways to even do home mods. Donors. We've got a lot of people in our area who want to give. They don't know how to give. So donors can give to organizations like their area agency on aging as well. And what we do is we use those funds to give back to people without all those restrictions. And so it, it just allows flexibility to actually help people in a different way. Um, another thing is we've got a lot of people that are retired but have a lot of ability, strength, time, and energy, and they want to use their skills, but at their own time. Well, people can also volunteer for area agencies on aging, and they can do some of those things too. So there are ways that we can help families, um, but currently those are challenges we have to overcome and we have to advocate for some changes in how the rules are written. Okay, Jen, before we um, open this up for questions and allow you to tell us anything else that you would like to share with us, I, I do have a question. This is a personal question. Uh, as somebody in, in her early 70s who's healthy now, uh, every once in a while I start thinking about what am I going to do if I live to be, say, 98 years old? Because our, we have one son who lives in New York City. Um, I don't know if I if I'm going to stay here in Indiana the rest of my life or move back to my home state of Nebraska or all that kind of thing. What should a person in my age bracket um, be looking, should we be planning about caregiving as, as we age ahead of before we need it? Yeah. You know, that is the number. It's one of those things that we need to talk about more and we don't do it and we should. So if there was one call to action, I would say that would be the call to action is start having those conversations with family now. You know, it's like anything else, you know, wills and things like we always we think about it, but we don't do it. And caregiving is just as important. There's so much support when a life comes into the world. But now as we have the end of life period, it's different. And we don't practice uh, asking these questions. What do you want? What would be your preference? Do you want to live with any of your children? Do any of the children want you to live with them? I mean, now is the time to answer these questions and figure that out uh, and know what your options are. So if you start with the Area Agency on Aging, you might learn about all the options that are out there. You might not qualify for them, Nancy, but at least you're going to be aware of what paths you can take. Even if you don't qualify them, meaning they're paid by the state, you can privately pay for them. So those options aren't just limited to people on Medicaid or people with strict income. The options are there for all. It's a matter if the Area Agency on Aging will fund those programs, that's where you're based on your eligibility and possibly your income, depending what you're looking at. Uh, area Agencies on Aging also help with assisted living. So for some people, it's about downsizing and not owning their own home and maintaining that home. And they want to have another place where they uh, feel comfortable and can age gracefully. So we do help with assisted living support. Um, there are also private pay caregiver uh, entities where maybe you don't want a family taking care of you. If that time comes, you would want a third party to come in. You might not want those relationships, familial uh, relationships doing that. Uh, but if you do and you have family, it really has been a blessing. And I have heard more and more families, thousands of families I've worked with over the years, uh, but many of them have been so grateful and appreciative to be their loved one's caregiver and be there for them all the way uh, until the end of life. And those are beautiful stories. And I hope people get a chance to hear some of those too. I read a news story this morning about two women who are 109 years old. Yeah, <laughs> so um, it got me thinking about this. So Jen, is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we go to uh, audience questions? Yeah, you know, I think there's a couple things coming up that are really important. There's another big wave of support for dementia care. So as we know with dementia and Alzheimer's also being more prevalent or at least noticed and getting attention uh, in the healthcare space, there is um, several area agencies on aging are working on a, a dementia caregiver coaching uh, system. So we actually hire and have skilled trained dementia caregiver coaches that are located within the AAAs. We also have programs um, 
that are focused on people with dementia and Alzheimer's that help with uh, support groups, um, other kind of um, interventions to help people react and respond differently to someone that might be having an episode or that just have some daily needs. So I just want to put that out there because I'm sure you'll have some listeners uh, that will have loved ones with dementia or Alzheimer's. It's that prevalent. But I also just want to give a recognition that, again, as you approach November with National Caregiver Month, a lot of entities are giving some extra push on information. So now really is a time to talk to your doctor, to talk to um, you know any professional that you have. They generally are getting information about caregiver support and, of course, going to AARP or the Area Agency on Aging for some information. If you live in Northwest Indiana and you're listening to this, we're even doing a pop-up this month. It'll be next Friday, the 17th, for a caregiver retreat. Uh, we have quite a few people signed up and we always would take more. Um, and it's really about getting them some knowledge, some support, I think some spa-like experiences on there. So uh, just things to make caregivers feel a little better. And then the last thing that comes to mind you had mentioned, um, or I think I read, that there's going to be some Indiana pathways coming up, some long-term services and support conversation coming up. And if you are currently on Medicaid and Medicare, and you're over the age of 60, that is going to be really important for you to stay connected with. So some of the funding is shifting next year so that there is more connection between all the providers that provide care for folks. And that transition that will happen in 2024 um, will apply to those people I mentioned. And so the area agencies on aging are critical in helping that transition, as well as some of the um, health plans that people may be familiar with. So we should be paying attention to information that comes out on that topic. That is a great point and very important to point. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Thank you. And Nancy, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, oh, wait, never mind. I do see questions. I'll let you, do you want me to read the first one? Yes, please. Okay, I'll read the first one. Um, so what service or program is most requested of Northwest Indiana Community Action? Oh, that is so good. I'm going to have to base on the knowledge that I have as the CEO, which is I often get things on paper uh, more so uh, than other mechanisms. We invest a lot in nutrition services. So home delivered meals, these congregate sites where, again, people are socializing and having meals uh, with other people. There's a lot of investment that goes into that. Um, and then I, you know, we also get a lot of questions about caregiving and what we can do to help caregivers. So I think nutrition and caregiver supports would be in those top tiers. And so those who, who are viewing this now, um, what's the best way to support Northwest Indiana Community Action or the Area Agency on Aging in your area of Indiana? There's several different ways to support. So um, if you're someone that can help spread the word about what we do and the impact we make, uh, that's really important just to make sure people are connected. When I was hyper-focused in caregiver supports, I worked for a company called Careforth and they were known at the time as Caregiver Homes in Indiana. And one of the repeating things that I heard was, I wish I knew about the service sooner. Most people reach out when they're feeling desperate. Sometimes they think, I got this, I can do this, or I don't know if my loved one needs help. I don't, I'm not sure. If you are ever in a position where you are yourself seeing a decline in some of your physical abilities, contact your AAA, see what they can do for you. If you're a caregiver, doesn't even matter if it's light caregiving, I'd call the AAA and I'd see what services you can uh, be eligible for. That's one of the ways to support is sharing the word. I also mentioned that area agencies on aging, they have definitely funds coming in, but like I said, they're limited in how they can be spent. So if you're someone that has the ability to financially give, your AAA can do some really cool things with those dollars. And so contact your AAA and find out what they do with donor requests. At NICA, we do a lot in housing. We want to do a lot in home mods. There's things that we want to get involved in as well with our funders. 
Um, and then lastly, on the volunteering space, I think that's really important. As, a, as our AAA, we also provide an AmeriCorps senior program. The AmeriCorps senior program engages people 55 plus to volunteer. And they're volunteering with other uh, people who are aging and need companion support. They're also volunteering for young children and being what we would call a grandparent kind of support. And they might go into Head Start programs and some school systems with young, uh, young children. So there's ways that people can get involved and really give back that would be helpful. Uh, Maddie Perry Lightfoot, who was um, going to be on this interview also, and we had some technical difficulties, just uh, sent in a question. Um, can you talk a little bit more about uh, home modifications and making a home safer? Uh, is it possible to make a home totally safe as a person ages, or are there little things you should um, look out for? I, you know, I, 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 yeah. Um... I will share with you because we also do a lot of work with housing. Uh, we help people find housing. We build affordable housing. We are really engaged in that space. And right now, uh, definitely Indiana, but I know it extends beyond Indiana. We are defining it as a housing crisis. So that does sound pretty intense, but it is, it is kind of intense. If people can age in their own home and that home can be modified, that is ideal. So moving is not always feasible right now. Um, some of the costs for moving might be high. There might not be as many options for you. We have found people even in renting situations, landlords maybe keep upping that rent. And so if you're on a fixed income, that might not be ideal. So if you can um, invest instead into the home that you are in, that can be the better option. Contractors are creative and they can do a lot of things. As far as what the AAA pays for, the home modification list is limited. I don't wanna misspeak, so I'd still redirect you to contact your AAA to find out exactly what the home modification can include. But there are things that you can do to a home to make it safe and accessible. Moving bedrooms from upstairs to downstairs, removing rugs if you're a fall risk, that's a big one for people. Opening hallways, just reducing clutter. There's a lot of things that we can do to prevent an adverse reaction in a home uh, that can really set someone back in a healthy from health. I read something the other day um, about when you reach a certain point in your life, downsizing, obviously, and getting rid of all your stuff. And I've been trying to do that for years. <laughs> um, but this, this writer was saying that if you reach a certain point, sell your house if you can and move into an apartment because you won't have yard work and you'll have somebody who takes care of things like the plumbing and the electricity and all that other stuff. And it, it, it kind of surprised me because, you know, it's been said for so many years, oh, you should own a house so that you have equity and all this good stuff. Have you ever heard that theory about um, moving to an apartment? Logically, yes, it definitely makes sense. It was, so we've definitely had people to talk about it because the managing a home is a lot, right? and especially the things that come with it. We have found that people like to move in communities where they are, um, what do they call low maintenance or maintenance free communities? So mm -hmm. there are communities that are also being built that are smaller homes. They're generally for people that are 55 plus or what have you. Um, and then they pay a little extra fee, almost like, a, um, what are those called? The, I forgot okay. the name of this. Like a neighborhood association. Yeah, association fee. Yep, their association fee. And it covers things like snow removal, you know, and the yard work. And if you live in Northwest Indiana, you cannot escape the snow. If you live in any part of Northern Indiana. So you you do have to think about those things. There are companies that will come out and do them. It's a matter if you have the funds for that too. So, you know, for, I'm not the expert definitely on, on the, um, what people should do with their investments, but um, that's something if people have a financial advisor, maybe they should talk about that and see what the options are. Maybe there's an option to do a condo and not an apartment or if there's rent limitations or a ceiling there. There could be some benefits for folks too. Um, another possibility, you had just done another uh, weekly segment on elder law. And so elder law attorneys know so many options for people and they're just really well versed in what folks can do with assets as well. So an elder law attorney can also be a great resource to find out what to do for a home. 
And then I did just also, oh, sorry, Nancy. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I was just going to mention um, AARP also has what we call our home fit guide and our home fit workshop workshops, um, which is basically just some suggestions and step by step into some modifications that you can make to the home that you're in. Um, and I'm just I'll add the link to that or Addison just added the link to that in the chat as well. If people wanted more information or if Maddie was looking for any more help, that should um, provide some good guidance as well. Just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. We had another uh, question uh, submitted. Uh, can you address what kind of respite care that a caregiver can use? I can give you an overview of um, the general respite program. And then I really recommend contacting your AAA for those details. So when uh, you do an assessment on the person who is aging, who needs care, they have quite a few questions to ask. And then it really kind of determines what the home life is like to know how much respite is allocated. So it could be maybe 20 hours a month. It could vary from that. And you can find companies that administer it a little differently. So the Area Agency on Aging can help you with that. Some companies want to provide respite at a minimum of two hours a day. Some want to provide respite at a minimum of four. What happens is someone will come to your home and then they'll stay with your loved one to let you just take a, a a breath and a relaxation from that responsibility. So some people want to leave their home, other people want to go hide in their bedroom and take a nap, uh, whatever that looks like for you of, of a kind of break that you need. Uh, if you are private paying, there are definitely options for you. You'll have more options if you private pay, uh, longer hours, extended time. Some people have used respite for a whole vacation and they've used it for one week a year. Um, these are things that again, that what a AAA can do, they might be limited on what rules and regulations state that they can administer. And if you do have funds or family that's willing to help pay for services, then you have more options. So, so AAA can help you if, if you are if you are a caregiver, take care of yourself. So that absolutely, that absolutely, yeah. So the. The, and thank you for drawing that out. The Area Agency on Aging assesses the, uh, they use the word consumer, but they assess the person who is aging who needs supports. And if that person needs a caregiver and a caregiver is identified, then they can choose programs that help the caregiver. Again, the focus is the person who needs the support, uh, which would be the consumer, but if they have a caregiver, then that caregiver can get services. The Area Agency on Aging is going to link the caregiver to the company that's going to provide them services. So the Area Agency on Aging is the care coordinator. They make sure the funding is there. They make sure that the care that's being provided is the care that someone wants. They help saying these are your options of agencies to choose from. They become your person that just makes sure uh, you get what you need um, when you need it. And so they work really hard to do that for you. Okay. Emily, do you have any other questions? I don't. Um, I'll just take this opportunity to say thank you to Jen. Um, that was really incredible information and a really great discussion at the end. So thank you so much. Um, and Nancy, I will hand over to you to close us out. Okay. Jen, uh, thanks for me too. You answered a couple questions that I've had some concerns about. So um, I'm probably going to be making a trip out to my area agency on aging. Um, if you uh, enjoyed today's program, please spread the word about it by sharing the event series with your networks, um, by word of mouth, on your social media channels. Um, you can find more information at aarp.org forward slash IN, that's for Indiana, www.aarp.org forward slash IN. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of your week.